what is, how long have you been concerned about transparency in the party? Because these issues have been raised by some people uh, for, for months, if not years now, and they've been kind of uh, poo-pooed and uh, you know, refused to be engaged with. How long have you been concerned that the party hasn't been as transparent as it should be? Well, look, I've never been an office bearer in the party, uh, coming in as leader of the last couple of weeks. But also equally, you know, when I've been speaking to you in the last year and a half, it's been as health secretary and I've had my hands pretty full uh, with that job. So I've been a government minister for the best part of ten and a half years before this role and that's where my concentration has been as opposed to the kind of machinations of the, the goings on at the SNP headquarters. So when the previous National Treasurer resigned, Douglas Chapman saying that you know, he was concerned about not getting to see the books and not getting the information he thought he should see in that role, that didn't ring any alarm bells with you? Look, I, I think it caused us all concern, but particularly when the police investigation began, that caused us all concern. But we're obviously very conscious, particularly as government ministers, not to be seen to interfere or intervene and what's a live police investigation in any way, shape or form. I take that very seriously, particularly as I was just a secretary at one point. But frankly, any government minister should be careful not to be seen to interfering in that. Now, when uh, Peter Murrell resigned as chief executive over the membership numbers, which you've called a debacle, mm. um, Mike Russell, the president of the party, said the party was in a mess. Now, how would you describe it now after the police have raided the home of your former chief executive and the former first minister of Scotland? Look, of course it's a difficult day and was a difficult day for the party, but let's also not lose sight of the fact that we have over 70,000 members. We still enjoy popular support. Uh, I believe we've got a really strong government in place uh, alongside an excellent cabinet and junior ministerial team. Now, the more and more we are talking about the priorities of the people of Scotland, what matters to them, then I believe that they will continue to gain and regain their trust. Uh, but of course, events over the last 24 hours have been exceptionally difficult. I'm not going to deny that. But these are extraordinary scenes. I mean, the number of police at the home of Peter Murrell and uh, the, the, the forensic tent, the vans that are there, I mean, it's like something out of a television drama. Uh, again, I'm not going to dispute with you that the scenes are very difficult. But also, when I talk to people, as I have been doing, uh, certainly over the last six weeks in the election campaigning up and down the country, their priorities aren't the membership numbers or necessarily what is going on within the SNP or within headquarters. Their concerns are high energy bills, cost of living crisis, the NHS, so on and so forth. So that's the issues that I think we have to be discussing. But surely it all undermines trust in the party and therefore the party of government. There's no doubt that people will question what is going on, what does it mean for transparency, hence why the first act as leader of the SNP and my first NEC was to instruct that review around governance and around transparency to try to make sure that we are being as open as possible around what we need to do to fix our own house and make sure it's in absolute order and to the best standard possible. What I would say, though, is that I think we gain people's trust by delivering for them on the issues that are important to them.